Uh, yeah, my throat's getting a little scratchy because I'm not usually used to talking, like, for this length of time about this kind of, about, well, anything. I'm not really used to having lengthy kind of conversation, especially one-sided like this. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, my throat's getting a little not happy with me, but it, it's no big deal. We're, we're almost, we're nearing the end here. Um, so, uh, and why'd I have to do this all today? Well, it's because it was a bug up my butt kind of a thing, and I just, I wanted to say it all now. So, now we're going to talk about the negatives about Canon White. So I know people are going to have a lot of problems with this, and they're going to say, well, we're talking about the difference between fact and fiction here. Yeah, I get it. I'm not saying these are completely equal. I'm saying they're, uh, to some extent, analogous, okay? If you were to take all the history books and toss them out and say none of these things happen anymore, this is, uh, there was no Napoleon, there was no Hitler, all these famous things, good and bad, they're gone now. <clears throat> we're now writing history from the beginning. Uh, it's new, it starts today. All the rest of the stuff doesn't even count. It's gone. Uh, oh, the War of 1812? No, nope. no War of 1812. I mean, we could write a new book about the War of 1812 and make a new War of 1812. Sure, we could do that if we wanted. We could pick and choose out of the stuff that came before and, and make new stories that are better, more compelling, more dramatic. But essentially, history doesn't count. Is basically, you know, what they're doing with this. It is stupid. The biggest argument that I hear about, well, they're freeing themselves uh, to tell better stories now because the history's gone. Really? You can't write a book now? You Like, there's so many... <sighs> How many books have been written in history? Like, period. Ever. And I'm not just talking... Uh... Let's, let's just go with published books. And when you get before standardized kind of publishing, before the printing press and all that, we'll count, like, scrolls and stuff that have kind of been adopted by societies and cultures in general as um, legitimate kind of writing. As far as, like, uh, there was, like, a story, and the whole town kind of believed this story, and so they kind of had a scroll on a wall or something like that, that th this was the story. You know, uh, not just, you know, fan fiction kind of stuff. And although stories back then were, for the most part, they were fan fiction. That's where a lot of stories were based. But, you know, just for the, the, the point there. And we'll even include, because a lot of this is written down now and still retold and it's still a story, like oral tradition, like with the Native Americans and, and that kind of a, a deal, where a lot of their stories weren't written down, but we still have them, at least for the most part. So those stories still count because they were still told, and they're, they're still, we can look back and say, especially now because most of them have been written down now, but they weren't before, they're still stories, they still exist. They're still part of what has existed. So you are saying, for that argument, we can't write things anymore. Oh, well, because our hands are tied, because somebody's already written something about that. Nobody can write a book about revenge anymore because Moby Dick's already been written. Yeah, but every book about revenge is always compared to Moby Dick. Yeah? Moby Dick was freaking awesome. It was more monumental at the time. It's going to draw comparisons. It doesn't mean you can't ever write a revenge book. It doesn't mean you can't write a revenge book with a freaking captain and a giant fish or, well, whale, so it's a mammal. But, I mean, you know what I mean? It's stupid. It's so stupid that people are like, well, we can't write a story about Luke Skywalker and, and lightsabers and stuff because we already did this book. So what? Do it better. To me, uh... <sighs> It's always a challenge, and uh, they say uh, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. So, to me, that's really where this needs to come from, as far as understanding these things. You can't say you can't be creative because there's so many other things that have already happened that tie your hands. You're just a piss-poor writer, seriously, if you can't do it. I can't do it because uh, other stuff happened. That's stupid. That's just... Sorry. It just is. I'm not saying there won't be complications. I'm not saying everybody can even do it. But this is talking... Separating the wheat from the, 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 wheat from the chaff kind of stuff here. Alright? If you are a good writer and you are imaginative, it doesn't matter. Think of it like this. If the entire universe, alright? The unknown universe 
was imagination in everywhere that you could possibly go in every variety and, and you know, mix and all that stuff. That's the universe, the known universe. That's it. That's everything. Nobody could ever think of anything else that isn't already existing in the universe. What we have already written and discussed in every single story, even if we include like the little fan fictions and stuff like that, it's planet Earth. And I think that's being generous. It's planet Earth. In the entire known universe, everything that's been written and done so far is planet Earth. There's a, no, we have so many and we're limited and we've written it. No, we haven't. No. We haven't expanded enough to really get into some more esoteric kind of maybe ethereal, weird stuff that doesn't go with conventional storytelling, maybe. And it doesn't become convention until we explore it and then it becomes convention. So, yeah, I think the world of imagination in there and even stuff based on stuff that's already come out. There's so many different varieties and, 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 you know, alternatives that you're still talking about, like a galaxy or two, just based on stuff we've already done. You know, talk about, uh, let's take, for instance, just out of the blue, Harry Potter, right? The first Harry Potter and just the first 10 minutes of first Harry Potter, all right? Uh, if you were to tell every single story involved in that 10 minutes in that world of Harry Potter even directly associated with that character um, from different perspectives and all that stuff and the different micro uh, uh, things of this happened at this minute, this happened at this second. You could fill a universe, uh, not a, uh, a galaxy's worth, let's say, within the known universe just based on those 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes of Harry Potter in, in, the, in the first, let's say, not even book, but where the book picks up, where the movie picks up, that first scene and what's happened between where they first pick up in the very first scene and 10 minutes from then, not just the first 10 minutes of the movie or of the book, but just in the first 10 minutes of the existence of that universe between then, you can fill a whole universe with stories based on that exact 10 minutes, even directly connected to Harry Potter himself. So for people to say... Oh, well, because these things have already been written, we can't do any more. They've tied our hands. It's just horse crap. We just don't have the imagination to do anything else. Is it freeing to do that? Can you now do things maybe you couldn't have done before? Sure. I don't think that makes you more creative. I don't think it makes it better. I don't think that's a good thing necessarily. It just makes you a weaker person because you can't do it without. It's like, um, can you climb the hill? Yeah, but if you... Give me a you know quadrant, or just drive right up it. You you could can climb it though. You could just walk right up. Yeah. But if it would be easier if I had a quadrant, I would enjoy it more if I had a quad runner. And these people over here, they're watching. They enjoy it more if I had a quad runner. It'd be more fun for them. But you can do it the other way. Yeah, but it'd be more a challenge. I mean, it might take longer. It might be more difficult. I might be out of breath by the time I get to the top. So you see the. We have these two scenarios where somebody's saying, well, but it'd be easier. Easier is not always better. All right? Oh, well, they tied their hands. They really can't do it. Yes, they can. They just got to be more creative. Anyways, I, sorry, I just really hate that argument. I think it's just uh, coming from such a limited place that you say, I can't do something because somebody's already done something and limited me now. They've tied my hands. I can't do it. I'm not saying that everybody should have their hands tied to do it. I'm not saying you can't do an original thing uh, anymore because, uh, you know, you're not taking the challenge. No, there is a challenge because even an original thing isn't original. You know, uh, the, like, uh, <clears throat> what was it, Tomorrowland was original. No, Tomorrowland's not original. The idea of a, a futuristic city, that you, that's never happened before. The reason of these two realities, that's never happened before. Uh, a little girl is a, a heroine, that's never happened. I mean, robots never happened before. Uh, I didn't give any spoilers, I don't think. I, I wasn't trying to. But, I mean, you know, all these things are in the uh, trailer. That's not original. None of that is original. The dialogue, I bet you could take every piece of dialogue in Tomorrowland and find an equivalent in another movie where they've used the exact same dialogue. Maybe in a different circumstance. There is nothing original about that. Is it original because put together in that exact manner for that exact story with the exact... Yeah, definitely. Totally different. And 
I didn't hate Tomorrowland, by the way. I liked Tomorrowland. It wasn't great, but I liked it. So I'm definitely not, like, trying to crap on Tomorrowland because I didn't like it or anything. I liked Tomorrowland. It was enjoyable. Um, <clears throat> but the point is, just because it's something that was original, or what the people are saying is original, even though it was based on a Disney, uh, you know, a part of their theme park, the actual movie itself and the script was original. Yeah, definitely. And as well as so much as we can call something original. But to say that, it, oh, yeah, it's 100% original. The, the, you couldn't have done that without it being... That's bullcrap. All that stuff's been done before. What he did was he found a story that wanted, he wanted to tell, she wanted to, whoever, that they wanted to tell. And they told it with... They had a lot of freedom. They could pretty much do what they wanted with this. But then even then, you have physics. I mean, you know, you could change physics and alter it, but you still got to stick with them. When you start violating your own physics... Uh, you take yourself out of the context of reality so much nobody can follow it or wants to. It's stupid at that point. Oh, well, there's gravity, but not really. Oh, well, you can fly, but you can't fly. We just, you know, when you have these inconsistencies in your own physics, especially on a major point of view, like time isn't linear. Well, you can do those sorts of stories, but you got to accept that time is linear and that you're violating that. So there's still the time is linear thing, even when you're violating it within your story. So, there are certain things that everybody's got to deal with, regardless of how original your thing is and how much freedom you have to write. So that's just, it's a, that argument's a not, it's a huge argument for people, but it's a non-starter. So, and I know, that's, that is a really big thing for me, because there's always that argument with this. Here's the other thing, and if you've watched my EU video, which is a few videos back, I don't remember what number it was or anything about that. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of us have had a lot of, uh, well, this emotional experience or, or just, we have, have a lot invested in the characters and our knowledge of Star Wars based on all this expanded universe. You're basically telling us to go F ourselves. Oh, you know how you know about Thrawn and Mar Jade and all that? Well, go F yourself. That didn't really happen. We don't happen, but it didn't happen. So F you. What do you mean, F me? It's, I didn't do anything wrong. Um, uh, Timothy Zahn didn't do anything wrong. You bought a franchise. You don't have the right to F with everybody else and tell them to go take a flying leap. So, again, my last video. I understand. You want to see my understanding of it, go watch the last video. It's stupid, though. I don't care how much you can understand and see their point of view. It's dumb. It is so dumb that they couldn't just adapt. This isn't going to change anything. I'm not trying to change anything. I'm like, oh, you need to change your mind. It's done. It's done. I've accepted it. I've moved on. I really have, uh, to a great degree, really just kind of accepted that that's what's happened and been okay with it. Not okay with it that I like it, because I obviously, freaking, I hate it. I think it's stupid. I think it's a terrible decision. But I'm okay with it in that I've accepted that it's happened. I've accepted that there's not going to be any going back. And I can move on, and I can move on with it, and, and let's just do the new canon. Okay, we're starting over. It's all good. I'm going to go with it. Hopefully it's cool. I'm just not happy about the fact that he did it, because I think the reasons he did it were stupid and so selfish. Just really, I think that's where it came from. It's selfish. We want this to be ours now. F George and F what he did before. Uh, F the prequels, especially. Everybody loved the original trilogy. We'll base everything off that and the Clone Wars. And everything else pretty much, you know what I mean? And it's like, this is stupid. You totally take away from the artistic expression of so many people by doing that. It's, uh, I don't know. Being kind of an artistic guy myself, even though I'm not an artist, like I don't draw things and stuff, although I do some writing. Um, but I've always been a guy who's gravitated towards uh, artistic endeavors. I really think that's taking a crap on both your fans and every single artist who's ever contributed, who you now just say, it doesn't count. Obviously, these things exist, and gather them all up and burn them Fahrenheit 451 style. But, uh, symbolically, they did. So, you could say, no, no. Yeah, because it doesn't count. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you read these. These stories are, are, are non-consequential to what we want. We're Star Wars fans. We want all the Star Wars stuff to be Star Wars. We don't want to read all this crap that has absolutely zero to do with Star Wars anymore. It's just fake. It might as well be actual fan fiction. We want to read stuff that really, when we read this story, Luke Skywalker did that. He did that thing. That is Luke Skywalker's thing. 
he did it. That makes it awesome. It's like, when you read it, it's like, well, he didn't really do that. You can't really do that. Maybe he can, maybe he can't. Who knows? Who cares? Well, I care. It takes away the weight of the material. Anyways, I think this video's gone way, way too freaking long. Um, probably not a whole lot longer than I, I thought it would, this one. But I think I pretty much covered my feelings on the whole new canon thing and, and what they're doing. Again, just to reiterate... I've, I've accepted it. It's kind of like the death of, you know, a family member. It happens. You're not happy with it, but it does happen, and you got to move on. And so I'm moving on. So the next few videos are kind of going to be about that.